Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 29th of April and uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM on follows. Very much around a good week. We'll have a look at the set of SFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and that will get us um, into the middle of May. I shall get on that for you in a moment. <laughs> Just to say that first, the video we say was the 6 a.m. upload. We've also released the XNUSA forecast and a little bonus video, the second uh, update for the early May back holiday uh, weekend. So uh, check out those free if you like free. If you like to do that, please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We had a look at El Nino. El Nino Watch was released uh, last night at 7 p.m. Quite an interesting video. So if you want to know about El Nino, what's going on in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, whether we're going to have an El Nino event uh, this year with the Super Nino um, and uh, whatnot, then uh, check out that video. It was released at 7pm last night and uh, it's a little bit of an a little bit of an added extra attraction uh, for a weekday video. So uh, please have a look at that and see what you uh, think if you're interested. Ah, uh, right, okay, all that said, I think we'll crack on. Why not do... Um, right, okay. <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Right, just start off with a CT, as uh, usual. Uh, we're, uh, we're, let's start off CT, as usual. And we see that central temperature is uh, currently sitting at 8.4, which is half a degree above the 61 to 1990 average. That's provisional to yesterday to the uh, 18th of... Um, April, so uh, changing to slightly milder than average uh, first uh, sort of for 20 days of April. That will probably tick down a little bit though at the end of the week and into next weekend. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're looking at Northampton today. The red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Northampton. Starting off a round average at the moment. We're going to see those upper air temperatures ticking down a little bit uh, through the second half of this week. And then, of course, get the colder snap coming up over the weekend and into the beginning of next week. Uh, into the closing days of April in the first week of May, we see the upper air temperature staging a recovery. Now, you'll notice the big green line, which is, as you know, the GFS operational run, big operational run, that absolutely took off in the uh, final closing stages. I will show you that run in a moment, but it is, it is the first GFS operational run that has uh, really pulled up proper heat from uh, Spain and North Africa of the season. So that is actually a Spanish plume that the uh, GFS midnight operational run was going for. Um, and as I say, you'll see it in a moment, but clearly uh, clearly an outlier. Um, there are very few uh, other members of the ensemble doing it. I suppose that one's just there. And then there's a gold member just here that's probably doing something similar. So so clearly, you know, very not very well supported. However, there is a warm-up that's taking place, though, uh, through the first week of May, compared to the cold snap that we have just there. Uh, also, more unsettled as well, so we're starting off pretty dry over the next couple of days, but then the weekend onwards through the final uh, week of May, uh, of April, I should say, and into the first week of May, looking generally unsettled. There's plenty of precipitation spike coming through there, so uh, there will be more rain to come. Temperature anomalies from the 19th, 27th of May coming out colder than average for the UK for Ireland through most parts of uh, Europe too. And precipitation anomalies from the 19th, 27th of May coming out drier than average in many northern and northwestern areas nearer normal further southwards and eastwards. The latest wind from that from Earth, no school dot net, shows that high pressure remains in control over Scandinavia and uh, we're still bringing the wind in from the east today, but dragging quite a, quite a cloud at the moment. However we, however, we probably will see, see, we probably will see, I'm having to get my words out, what's wrong with me? We probably will see, I haven't been on the magic wall, so I, <laughs> I promise you, too early for that. Um, we probably will see the uh, the um, uh, skies brightening through the afternoon and into the evening as that cloud gets pushed further and further westwards. 
Right, let's go through the chart data then. This is our latest you can make your run. It's on your midnight on Saturday. Low pressure is open to sell. We can actually high pressure blocking up towards Greenland and Iceland. So as we go through the weekend into the beginning of next week, we break the low pressure in two and we pull colder air in from the north and from the northeast. So still with that cold snap through the early part of next week. By Wednesday, as well as we get to, with the you can make your own run, the uh, low pressure in the Atlantic is starting to move back in from the west and the southwest. That will bring heavy rain. That might turn to snow as it bumps into cold air in the north and we'll start to introduce milder air from the south and from the southwest i come again that blocking area of high pressure and green ice or low pressure is underneath it on saturday over the weekend again we've got a cold air trying to push down from the north and managing to do so with the beginning of next week we pull in most cold north to northeasterly winds and a ridge build through the country that probably brings quite cold nights through uh, the middle of next week no light frost is distinctly possible with that by day probably not think too bad in the april sunshine maybe upper air temperatures for midday next wednesday You've got minus five cells minus five celsius ice firm through the country so it is pretty uh chilly air that we've got there uh, especially for the time of the year the milder air from the atlantic up to the middle of next week on icon run being kept at bay gfs midnight run again with a blocking air of high pressure around green ice and low pressure is underneath it we find for the only part of next week that cold air gets brought down from the north and from the northeast uh, and then into the second half next week you start to change the wind direction so uh, the high pressure block sort of uh, re releases its grip and we start to pull up milder or warmer air from a southerly southeasterly direction as we get today's nine and ten um, beyond that we go into the beginning of may we have high pressure over to the east country low pressure is out to the west winds starting to draw up from a southerly direction now these are the upper air temperatures for the first of may it's 300 hours away it's a very long way out but notice the heat really starting to build through spain and into north africa it's very early to be seeing such extreme heat as that across southern spain and uh, north africa and look what happens as we go through the first days of May. We have high pressure of the east, low pressure out to the west. And we start bringing up those southerly winds. We had a lot of this last summer. Of course, the GFS Midnight Run is uh, playing around with uh, a return of a very warm southerly winds. So look at the upper air temperature. We've got the plus 20 Celsius isotherm into the Bay of Biscay. That is the 2nd of May. That would be absolutely remarkable if that came off. I can't believe that will verify. Um, but there we go. Plus 20 Celsius isotherm. Is into the Bay of Biscay plus 25 Celsius iceberg across southern parts of Spain, plus 15 Celsius iceberg is just off the southwest of England at that point. Uh, also, that's something volatile, of course, so low pressure beginning to form around Spain, Portugal, and Biscay, as well as being out in the Atlantic on Wednesday, the 3rd of May. However, look how far north that plus 20 Celsius iceberg is getting into northwestern parts of france absolutely remarkable gfs midnight run obviously an extreme outlier um but you know we had this last summer didn't we we had a few of these gfs uh runs it got very hot up in the acceleration remember 40 degree scenario which did start out as an outlier and we said it's not going to verify but we showed it for interest purposes purposes only and in the end um, well, you know, we can actually get, <laughs> get 40 degrees, so you just never know these days, do you? As far as we get to the GFS Midnight Run, it's to the 5th of May, and then it's all looking really, really rather, really rather volatile, rather fun, with low pressure both to the west and also to ourselves as well. Upgrade temperatures still looking very warm for the time of the year, but I suspect there's increasing risk of volatility there as we're heading into the coronation weekend. Good gracious me. Right, GFS is an interesting run, isn't it? Dum 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 interesting. Right, let's have a look at GFS 6 then then and uh, here we go once more. Saturday, we find that we've got low pressure uh, around the south of the country, blocking air of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. We start bringing these chilly to cold north northeasterly winds through the early part of uh, next week. 
And then the high pressure slips these will through the second half of next week as low pressure starts coming in off the Atlantic, bringing up that much milder push of southerly, southwesterly winds. Heading up toward day 10, stays unsettled. The Azores so High is trying to reach the northwards, but not really successfully doing so. Um, and so the GFS 6 said is cooler and more unsettled as we go through the opening days of May with uh, low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic, bringing lots of unsettled weather with it. That's how we are set up as we get to um, the 5th of May, so as we get to with GFS uh, runs today. Again, it's uh, it's drawn up wind from south, but it's nowhere near as hot as the uh, GFS midnight run, whilst looking at your prayer temperatures, they're <laughs> looking a lot more sensible, um, aren't they? So, uh, and also unsettled, though. This area of low pressure is a bit ominous with the coronation weekend. Uh, that could well spoil things for uh, his majesties. If you enjoyed the video, then please do you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Web. It's, it's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much for doing that. 65 subs can get us to 15.8k. So if you could give us a sub, then uh, please do show it to your friends. So fans who subscribe, you'll be able to watch Gaz Web. It's with them and see future weather content. We thank you so much for doing that. GM again on Saturday with high pressure blocking around green ice and low pressure is underneath it as we go into the beginning of next week. Down comes those cold, cool, cold north northeasterly winds. High pressure ridging in from the north in the middle of next week will keep things pretty chilly, especially so at night by day. Probably not too bad. Heading up towards day nine and ten, that blocking air of high pressure is still ridging in from the north actually. So it brings about dry weather actually up to day ten, but quite chilly. And then the ECM looks like this. Once more, blocking area of high pressure around Greenland, Iceland on Saturday. Low pressure over and to the south of the country into Sunday and Monday. Down come those chilly to cold north winds and high pressure ridges in from the north. Probably bringing overnight frost, but maybe not too bad with temperature by day. And then up to days 8, 9, 10, uh, we start bringing low pressure in from the Atlantic. So that brings unsettled weather in from the west, building the high pressure up over France. You'll notice if that high pressure was to break eastwards, what's the upper air temperature looking like for Spain at day 10? We do see some quite high temperatures, actually, some quite hot air into central and southern parts of Spain there. By day 10. So if the GF, uh, if the ECM, I should say, uh, sent the high pressure in that direction, there is some quite hot air to the south. Um, could the ECM be going in the same direction as that GFS midnight run? Well, we can't say because it finishes up at day 10, but we will have a look at the ECM on some of the clusters in a moment. Uh, so this is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. We're, we're going to be bringing uh, rain in from the east uh, later on this week. It's Friday, Thursday to Friday, quite wet across England where it will be dry about for Scotland and also for Northern Ireland. Showers along the spells of rain into the open half next week. Then things are a little bit drier as that reach builds in from the north. It turns cold through the early part of next week of course um and then uh, wet weather back in from off the atlantic round days uh nine and ten um and we start to introduce some milder air from the west and from the southwest too this is the option on the table within the ecm ensembles today for day 10 gets to the 29th of april 51 from the ice tank top is 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them with a ridge to our south, low pressure away to our west and also to, and to and also to our north, and the high pressure going over towards the Canadian side of Greenland. Could that start to draw up some warmer air from the south and from the uh, southwest? Let's have a look at day 10. This is the option that we've got, whoops, and uh, we can see that uh, at day 10, which gets day 14, I should say, it gets us to the uh, 4th of May, we've got low pressure to our east and out in the Atlantic, rather inconclusive about what's going on, with that probably a ridge building through there, I would have thought, um, I was a bit inconclusive there uh, today, uh, 14, but certainly no sign of like an excessively warm push of uh, air from the south, so that uh, GFS, uh, we've got a pressure run, really does look quite, you know, quite isolated, both within the wider model output and within 
um, its ensemble. Well, I'm not going to say it won't verify because we did have this at times uh, last summer. I did actually say last summer that 40 degrees won't verify, and it did in the end. So um, let's just wait and see what happens. 7325, leaving the 500-millibar height and knowledge breaking down into week beers. The first week beer takes from the 19th to 25th of May. The uh, coming week has high pressure flocking to our north and northwest, low pressure to our south southeast, all winter coming in from a chilly or a cold north or northeasterly direction. Week two uh, is going to be the 26th of April to the 2nd of May, Tropical low pressure of Scandinavia, low pressure in the Atlantic. High pressure is trying to build over uh, Spain, or is building over Spain, and that's trying to pull up uh, hotter winds from the south. However, for us, it's actually these cool northerly, northeasterlies that are still in the ascendancy for week two. Week three is <laughs> going to be the third to the ninth of May. Um, and this week has high pressure to our uh, west, south, and also north. So it looks like high pressure is generally building through Western Europe. However, we're probably still quite cool with that. Still, you know, way the high pressure is oriented, probably still bringing in the wind from a northeasterly direction. And then week four is going to be the 10th to the 16th of May with high pressure around uh, Iceland and Greenland. Low pressure is to our south and winds are coming in from uh, the east with that. No sign of anything excessively warm with the uh, CFS for the next four weeks either. And uh, we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Dow's Webids. And we thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that for us. Uh, right, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. So we're going to have the uh, 6 a.m. Uh, UK weather forecast. We will have the uh, European outlook, detailed look at the weather for the next week, 10 days across Europe. There will be a 10 to 14 day video update too. And we're going to be having our mid-season review tomorrow for the spring forecast. So we'll see how we're getting on with the uh, spring 2023 forecast that release at the end of February. I don't think going too bad, but we'll have a look anyway at uh, how things are shaping up in the mid-season review for the spring forecast. And that will be tomorrow's little bonus video. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.